This is an update video on this toy roidal style engine that I've been developing. Had a lot of great comments and some donations, but the most common comment was about the MYT engine. This engine works basically the same way as the first one that I designed, except with twice as many pistons. This American guy designed and made it, and instead of an ellipse like I have, it's got this uh, geared thing with cams on it that it actually completely stops the pistons, which is probably a little bit better. But my way is a bit more simple. Someone in the comments of my last video had actually worked on a different version of this engine made by a German guy, and um, he said that the only way of sealing it was very tight tolerances between the plates. So I'm guessing this is how this one worked as well. You can see these guys have done a really great job of machining this thing. But he had, uh, I think, 10 engineers working for him when he made this. You can see it's connected by those blue lines there to the separate rings. And it basically works in two pairs of those inner housings moving. But a lot of surfaces to seal in the combustion chamber, which reaches, you know, a thousand PSI be super hard to seal it but it allows you to put a massive amount of cc in such a small space and with it firing so many times every revolution it'd just be a torque monster the guy that talked about the other engine in the comments said it was a real problem with heat you could imagine with it always firing on one side of the circle there it would have heat problems it would start to distort and then it would take up your tolerances and then it would stop running he said it only ran for five minutes or so so to totally get around the sealing issues, just have a fixed casing with the piston inside with magnets in it and the magnet moves the piston around. There are issues with this, heat and you can also get eddy currents from magnets passing through the aluminium but you could make a little stainless uh, track for it so it wouldn't be affected and you can also buy a different type of magnets, I forget their name, that can take a lot more heat. But will it really have enough torque? I printed this little test jig and put some of these magnets in here to see how much torque it can take. I'll just test my torque wrench on it. Here's my torque wrench. Ooh, not much torque and that's ideal conditions. Obviously I could add a lot more magnets but it's not looking promising. Back onto the computer for a lot more design work and I've got a bit of a different concept that I sort of touched on in the last video where the whole housing spins but it ended up being a little bit more complicated than I wanted but I couldn't think of any other way of making it. Now the whole housing spins and there's no need for any seals in the combustion chamber the only sealing now is done by the rings. Con rods connect to the pistons through a slot in the housing which never gets exposed to combustion. The pistons moved back and forth by the con rod running in an ellipse shape that's inside behind that white piece there. A lot of people didn't understand how the explosion will happen and it'll be pushing on both sides of the piston. So I demonstrate here with my fingers because of mechanical advantage when I push my fingers apart it tries to rotate in the direction I want it to. As soon as you pass top dead center the leading piston has a mechanical advantage over the other piston so it will always move this direction no matter how much force is on both. On the back side here you can see the slots in the housing that's going to create the drive and the ports for intaking fuel and dumping exhaust. The spark plugs will move with the cylinder and power will just be transferred, sort of like a distributor does. Let's take it apart and see how it works inside. First up we have the housing. Then the four pistons that are shaped like this, they've got a hole through the middle which connects the drive. A little bit of a cutout for the spark plug. Then we have our valve piston which sits in there that works on this small cam. This is actually stationary. So when we're drawing in the mixture this will be this way which exposes that port and as it rolls around this valve shuts compresses the gas 
explodes, starts opening, starts opening, this has remained shut, then when it gets to its maximum opening, it will be on the other, the, the cam will move this across, and it will let the exhaust out. The exhaust will also be pushing on this piston, so you'll get extra power. It will produce more power, forcing this piston around the cam, which will actually drive it further. This other one sits the other way, and they're linked together, because they will, they will be always opposing. I really didn't want to have to use valves, but the only other way was to have complicated seals like this birotary engine for a moving expansion chamber. This was made via Chex Inventor, which is really well balanced. Problem is it needs a complicated array of seals. Every time you've got moving seals in a combustion chamber, you're gonna have problems. That's why piston and rings work so well. But still, this is a super cool concept. Then the arms are attached to this piece, which stays still. Then the ellipse spins with the rest of it, which moves the arms back and forth, which makes these go through two cycles of compression contraction, so it, it can contract to pump out the old charge and also compress to fire. Little, these spark plugs will be in these holes from the other direction. It seems complicated, but it's not that bad. Then on the back side, these are the intake and exhaust ports, so they share ports. Good thing about this is that on the MYT engine, the explosion is always happening on one place over and over. So you've got a hot side and a cold side, which will eventually turn this thing into an oval. But since now each combustion chamber is being shared with exhaust and fuel air, it will self-cool, sort of like a four-stroke does. That will bolt on there and spin with it. Then this piece here goes inside and this will act like a rotary valve. So that will be the in no, this will be the intake side here. That's just a little thing to hold the carburetor. As it comes around, it's drawing, 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 and this side's exhausting. And then drawing in fuel air, and this side's exhausting. And then around here, it's doing nothing. Because the piston valves are shut, this is never under compression, so it only needs a small, basically a normal lip seal or something in there. On that MYT engine, the pistons are basically connected to this ring. And these, these pistons are stationary attached to this ring. And these pistons are connected to the other. So they always stay with each other. But the problem with this is you've got three surfaces to seal. You've got to seal this one in here and the next one against the other half. And these seals have to handle the whole power of the engine. And I was talking to a guy in the comments that had actually worked on the motor. And he said that the only seal was tolerance. So they just had a super tight tolerance between the plates. And that was what they were using to seal. And that's why it would only run for a short time before the heat would get too much and it would distort. And I guess it would jam up and rub. The good thing about this new design is as it's spinning, the whole thing's spinning together. So this whole motor is spinning, acting as the flywheel. The pistons are oscillating side to side. But since it's spinning, it's kind of like one of those rotary plane engines that worked really well. But that MYT motor did give me a, another good idea. But these opposing pistons always move the same. So I can have a ring. These rings connect on the back here. That move these pistons exactly the same. And the outward force of the pistons from the centrifugal force will always be held central so they won't be trying to tip and twist like that they're always forced away from each other the centrifugal force won't cause more wear on this side because that's where it will the force will be taken so this ring will take all of that force which is great 
and this solves another problem as well which is oiling so oil can go through the back of the slots there and stay within the piston and keep everything lubricated which is another great feature so you won't need to run on two-stroke oil there's another way that this could work instead of having this drive system on the back here what if you had this full of magnets and then you ran electrical coils to do the spacing electronically so as it comes around the coils will activate to compress the fuel air mixture it'll explode and then as this piston's going around it's charging 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 and then it can come together again and push the exhaust out but this would ha have to work only as a generator that's all it would be good for I put my piston design in the PCBWay website just to get an idea of how much it will cost. So $41.77 US, reasonably good. I need four of those pistons, but I need to keep working on the design and get them perfect to what I want. I've got a whole heap more boring design work that I've got to go through. I've got to put ball bearings in everything that needs them. Uh, this motor is going to end up to be 178 cc's, 9.2. Uh, 9 to 1 compression ratio I'll probably just make the first housing out of mild steel or something like that that's reasonably cheap and I'm not going to worry about an oiling system or even cooling or anything like that I just want to make sure something runs before I get too carried away but there's still a lot of designing that I have to do uh, these internal pistons here are the same diameter as the rotary piston so I can use the same rings which I've bought which are an off-the-shelf off item that are pretty cheap. There won't be too much to show you guys on this because there'll be a lot of design work, but I'll be always working on this in the background and uh, next video will be something else. But thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Hopefully I get this thing going one day.